Hi. In today's video, I'll be making a custom Mandalorian helmet using this failed attempt at a Din Djarin Beskar helmet. This helmet was sanded and all of the gaps were filled. And then when I did one layer of, of priming, it got this crazy texture in it um, from the, the paints not getting along with each other. And it would have been way too much work to sand all this off and start from scratch. So I just made a new helmet. And then this, I'm gonna to try to do something unique with. So my inspiration here is I have the Death Watch color scheme on this piece of paper. And I have some rusted World War II helmets. And I'm gonna to try to make a helmet that's been deserted, left to rust. Um, and hopefully I can achieve something pretty cool with this. So this is, I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I've never done anything like this, but it should be fun. So hope you enjoy. Thank you. Okay, so I'm in my painting area right now, and the first thing I'm gonna do is hit it with a little bit of Craft Bomb Spray Adhesive. This will leave a weird texture on the surface um, that'll make it look like rust at the end, hopefully, is the goal. Um, this is a technique I learned from Van Oak's Props. I'll leave a link to his video down in the description. It's really, really cool. Um, but hopefully, um, I do this correctly. So. My order is going to be uh, this spray adhesive, then black spray paint, then the whole thing's going to get chromed. Um, then I'll let that sit. I'll uh, let that sit for a little while. Hit it with a clear coat, and then we'll start adding the the paint over top of that and chipping it away. So that's the main idea. P pretty much the same thing as the Boba Fett helmet, except it's getting this in between to give it a little more texture for when it gets rusted. So you can see here, it just put a little bit of a different texture on the surface. Um, and this, this will make more sense when a couple more layers get added as to why this was done, but this will give it more of a pitted metal look. Okay, I've allowed this to cure, and while it was curing, I warmed up my lacquer um, with some warm water. So now I'm going to go over it with a clear gloss lacquer, uh, or a black gloss lacquer. Okay, now that the dust coat is done, I'm gonna hit it with a full coat, and then it should really show all the different scratches and imperfections in the surface. Okay, so now I've gone over it with another coat of the, the spray adhesive, and hopefully the camera's picking this up, but there's some pretty interesting textures going on here um, that will hopefully look really cool when the rust effect is applied. But so far it's going quite well. Uh, the next step will be to chrome this whole thing. Okay, to chrome this, I'll be using the same chrome I used for the undercoat on my Boba Fett helmet, which is Rust-Oleum Bright Coat Spray Paint. I won't be doing the same chrome I used for my Mandalorian helmets because uh, the airbrush takes a long time to spray it on. You can get some tiger striping because of the thinner nozzle. And that stuff is five times more expensive. So a can of this is like four bucks and I can do 20 of these. So Rust-Oleum Bright Coat does a really good chrome for what I'm trying to achieve here. Okay, so I just did the chrome on this, and wow, this technique is awesome. Uh, it's kind of hard to pick up on the camera. I'll try to get some close-up shots of it, but this left a really bumpy... I didn't do full fill. There's some black showing through that makes it look really old. Um, this is a really, really awesome technique. Um, the next step will be to clear coat to lock this all in, so when I do all the masking to do the paint job, uh, I don't lose any of this paint or texture. But this is... 
For a, for a helmet I thought I was gonna have to throw in the trash, this is coming along really, really cool. Okay, so I've given this a little time to dry. Uh, I love how it looks. It's got this crazy texture on it that looks banged up and really old metal. And the black really that's showing through really sets off the chrome over top of it. So the next step will be to clear coat it. And this is where you can get in a lot of trouble doing chromes. If you use the wrong clear coat, it can completely dull the shine. Um, that's not as big of a deal for something like this that's going to end up being dulled down anyway, but my preferred clear coat is this all clad uh, clear coat with a K, um, if you can see that. This is this is what I use on all my Mandalorian helmets. Um, and even after they've been clear coated, they still keep this really awesome shine. So highly recommend this product. Uh, and it has to be shot out of an airbrush, so I'm going to do that next, and then it's time to start masking. So, all clad clear coat is the stuff I use. Okay, so I've coated almost the entirety of the helmet now in uh, masking fluid. That'll give me some flexibility on, on how I'm going to peel it all off because I want this thing to be 
showing as little paint at the end as possible. And I think it's going to look really cool once I add all the rust effects and stuff. But basically my goal here is to cover as much of this and have it look asymmetrical and also natural because one of the hardest things when you're um, applying weathering to something to make it look real is it's got to be pretty random, which when when you're doing it, it's easy to go two swipes here, two swipes here. So you want it to be pretty random. And also, um, oh, you don't want to overdo it, at, but for something like this, um, I want it to be really, really weathered. So you want to, you want to try to make sure you're keeping it very, very random while also having it make sense and telling the story you want to tell. So this, this helmet, according to my story, I've made up for it is, has been left out in the desert for, for years. Um, and is just being reclaimed. So, uh, based on that story, it makes sense that this thing would have almost no paint left on it because the, because the sand's been blowing against it, breaking off all the paint. I put a piece, I did some masking here with masking tape because I want, I want this part of the helmet to be basically have zero paint. Um, but the problem with masking tape is it leaves really regular straight lines. So I put masking tape down and then covered it with the masking fluid. So this will get, then get painted a different color blue than the face. And hopefully it looks really cool. So we'll see. Okay, so I have the second coat of blue on, and now I just need to peel this mask, and then peel all of the masking fluid. Okay, so the ears are still silver. This part's still light blue, and now it's time to get rid of all of the masking fluid around the rest of the helmet. So this section is going to be really silver and you'll see later that this is because I want this to be a the spot of a blaster shot. So there I'll airbrush in some burn marks and I think I can get it to look really cool. But a lot of peeling work, so I'm going to try putting duct tape down and seeing if I can peel some of the masked off, masked off parts off. So let's see, let's see if this works. After about 45 minutes of peeling masking fluid, this was the result. I could have likely peeled off even more of the paint, but I liked how it was looking, so I stopped here. Okay, so as you can see, I got the paint chipping done, and it's at a spot where I think it looks really, really cool. So my next couple steps are going to be based off of Van Oaks's process. Um, and that's where I add a couple layers of weathering, um, water down with Windex. Um, you water down the acrylic paint with Windex and then spray on more Windex to make it run. So hopefully if I do this right, it'll get a nice dirty rust effect going throughout the entire piece, as well as darkening up with a light blue and dark blue to make it look like it's been aged. So I'm going to jump into that now and I'm going to apply the paint with this chip brush.
Okay, so <clears throat> this this is the side right here that hasn't been weathered yet, and you can see there's quite a difference between that side and this side. This side looks way grimier, looks way more like it's had some years on it. And then this side, the blues are still too crisp to really make sense. So I'm gonna do this side and then I'm gonna do a rust pass. Okay, the same way I did the black wash last night, I'm gonna go in with a, a brown wash. Okay, now to do the rust effect, I'm using burnt umber acrylic paint, and I'm buying it the same way. So I've got a lot of the weathering done. I'm really happy with how it's going so far. Um, now to do this spot right here. This spot is intended to be like a blaster spot that hit it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shine up a section in the middle with a little bit of rub and buff. And then I'm going to feather out uh, burn marks with a uh, black airbrush. Now with rub and buff, it only takes just the smallest amount because it's wax based, so if I just put a little bit right here. Okay, so I have a very thin black from my airbrush. So I'm just gonna... That's cool. That is actually exactly what I was going for. And now I'm just going to use this black airbrush to uh, highlight a couple of spots. Okay, so this face shield was originally for another project, um, but it had, I accidentally got some super glue on it. Um, I tried attaching it with super glue instead of hot glue. And the result was all of this corrosion on the surface, so I'm gonna use it for this. Since it, and I'm gonna add some brown paint to cover up the white, make it look as if this thing's been left in the desert for many years. So let's see. <laughs> and I can still see through it, so that, since these things are hard to come by, I might as well reuse one that's already messed up with me. So the purpose of this build was for me to use this helmet that I thought was complete trash after it had a horrible paint reaction, 
and make it into something unique that I could use to build some skills and try something new that I'd never done before. And this is what I would like to call a success. This, this helmet tells a story. It's, it looks like it's really lived out in the wilderness for 20 or so years. The paint chipping effect that I was able to get on this is pretty believable. Um, the rust is ju I, I don't think I overdid it with the rust look. And a couple spots where I could do better. This, this bullet, it, it could definitely be done better, but I'm happy with it. It looks cool. Um, and I got to reuse a face shield that I was going to throw away. So for, for a project that I got done in a day and a half, this couldn't have gone better. Um, so this, this whole thing was done for May the 4th. Um, I was really busy the last two weeks, and on Sunday I finally got a chance to start working on this. So hopefully I have it out for Tuesday. But this was re a really fun project, and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.